Greetings and salutations, YouTubers. This is Zillafan85. I'm back today with my latest video, my latest figure review. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my Bandai Movie Monster Series Godzilla 1991 figure. Uh, this was one I was definitely excited for when they announced it and, of course, released it. And um, was really, really happy to be able to pick it up. I actually got it from uh, a Megacon convention. Um, I think it was 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, was really, really happy to, uh, to have added this guy to the collection. Um, so, you know, definitely. Uh, so this is, the, again, the 1991 Godzilla design from the film. Uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Essentially, it's the same design as the 1989 Godzilla, but there were some tweaks that were done. If I had to pick one over the other, I would uh, I would probably aim for the 91, just because I like some of the added bulk and a little bit meaner looking face and whatnot uh, that they that they gave this guy. So, and of course, too, there's essentially like two different versions of the 91 suit. You have the Hokkaido version, and then you've got the, um, the Shinjuku version from the ending of the film. Uh, this one, I believe this figure is more based on the Hokkaido version, and that, that for me, in, uh, personally, is my uh, favorite incarnation of this design. So, um, you know, I was a little disappointed when I saw that the uh, SH Monster Arts figure came out that was based on the Shinjuku version, but they did make it to coincide with the uh, Mecha King Ghidorah re-release, so under understandable, at least from that point of view. Uh, but I got this guy, so I'm very happy. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, I know may sound weird, is actually my personal favorite of the Heisei-era films. And, of course, a uh, top five for me as far as favorite Godzilla films of all time goes. So, if you've ever seen my rankings, you would uh, you would see that. Um, next in line would be Godzilla vs. Biollante. So, I, I really love both films. Uh, but, nonetheless, like I said, I was really happy to pick this guy up. And so, let's just go ahead and jump into the review. We're going to start with the tag here. So, now the one thing to note, and other reviewers have said the same thing, this money shot that you've got for the tag that really is based on the, um, uh, uh, that is a scene from the uh, 1989 Godzilla, so Godzilla vs. Biollante. Um, I'm not really sure why they did that, but, you know, then again, the anti movie monster series has done things like that in the past, so, you know, a little bizarre, but it is what it is. A uh, cool, cool photo nonetheless, though. And, of course, you got the 2021 when the figure was released. Godzilla 1991. Of course, the Japanese kanji there. On the inside, you've got some legal jargon in Japanese and what have you. And a little silhouette of the 1991 Godzilla here. Of course, Godzilla trademark. All that good stuff. And on the back, another sort of silhouette with the dorsal plates. And that says Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. Course. Um, and of course that's in Japanese and then we've got again Japanese and then movie monster series the Bandai logoing on the back so very very cool look-see at the front and I'll set this aside and next up let's go ahead and take a look at the paint and the detail for this guy so again you've got that signature uh, charcoalish gray color for bot uh, for Godzilla's um, you know, paint scheme on his body, his traditional coloring. And you got some different, a little bit of shading throughout as well. It's a little hard to pick up, but you can see little hints of it here and there. Uh, really nice scaling done throughout the body as well. When you look at the face, definitely, uh, you know, now to a degree, I say that they capture the 91 Godzilla look. Hopefully the camera will somewhat pick that up for you guys. I think for the most part, in my personal opinion, they they captured it. However, the drawback to me is the eyes. We'll talk about these. So you've got so like very orangish eyes, like an, maybe an orangish brown, if you will. Um, but you do have the white, uh, the whites in the eyes, and of course the black dots. People say, but really. Um, Really, for this Godzilla in the 89, you shouldn't really be seeing any whites in the eyes. It's usually all that orangish-brown color throughout, and of course the black 
uh, the black pupils and center is really what it should be without, without, for the most part, without seeing any, any whites in them. But I mean, that's the way I've always seen it when I've seen the 89 and 91 Godzilla designs, but you know, it is what it is. It, yeah. It takes away from it a little bit in my opinion, but I still think overall they did a decent job, you know, and certainly the face otherwise, I personally think, uh, does a, does a good job and represents the 91 Godzilla fairly well. She's got the ears on the side here, some nice detailing. You got the rivets on the top of the head there. Got the nostrils here, and some wrinkles done around it. And of course, the teeth. Teeth done in this sort of um, darkish cream bone color, I would say. And then you've got some deep red for the inside of the mouth, the roof, and then the tongue. And even give it a little bit of a gloss as well to give it a bit of a wet look. So it's a nice little attention to detail, I think. Of course, the teeth just part of the mouth and painted on so they're not individually sculpted or anything. But that's mainly par for the course with uh, uh, with Bandai Movie Monster series anyways. So, uh, But again, you got the scaling around the face and down the neck and again down the body here. And of course, you got that... Uh, that design patterning for the front part of the neck there with the scales and different lines and patterns he's got, which is signature of this Godzilla design. Um, Heisei in general, but really in particular the early Heisei with the 8991 designs there. And then again, very signature of the 91 Godzilla, you got this very puffy, muscular looking chest. Which is something that I really like. It really makes him look imposing, I think. So I definitely like that. Again, more of the scales and got some lines and whatnot done to give it that movie accurate look there. Again, the scales on the arms and then, of course, the hands here. Uh, again, that sort of creamish bone color fades into the fingers there, I would say. And some nice detail work. A little bit of detail on the bottom, but not really any paint on the bottom parts of the hands, as you guys can see there. But otherwise, on the top parts, pretty nicely done. And all the scales as you go down the abdomen area and then down into the legs here. And you got all that musculature design. Again, very indicative of the 91 Godzilla. Like I said, definitely made him... Um, bulky and uh, bulkier and more muscular than the 89 i would say is some of the tweaks that they added to this guy I'll put the dirt there just pull that out of the way and you got the kneecaps here and then of course you got down into the feet and again more of that creamish bone color there a little bit of paint uh, wear here like you see on this toe in particular and the way it sort of fades uh, from the toenail, from the toe claws into the into the toes themselves, but not too bad. I think pretty nicely done overall. Some nice des uh, design work there as well. Nice sculpting, I think. So really, again, I think really captures that look pretty well there. Of course, on the bottom of the feet, you got the Bandai trademark information, the Bandai China, and then of course trademark Toho Company Limited. So, par for the course with Bandai here. And, of course, down the tail, you got all the segments and the scales running down the tail there. Looks really good. And, of course, on the bottom part, a little more plain on the bottom here, but not too bad looking. Still segmented pretty well, I think, for the most part. So, I like it. And then, of course, where the rivets go into the dorsal spines here as you go down the neck. Of course, the larger dorsal spines that go down the main part of his body and into the tail as they sort of taper off. And it's got like a done in this smoky gray color for the sort of the main parts of the spines. And it sort of fades into the darker charcoalish gray as it gets more towards the center of the dorsal plates and some... Um, you know, some detail work done for the sculpt on them. Looks um okay for the for the most part, I think. At least you know the sculpting. I think the paint, as you guys can see here, they, it's more like sprayed on, so it's not really individually painted. So you guys can see where it kind of bleeds out down there. But again, that, that 
that is something that uh, Bandai tends to do a lot. So just kind of is what it is. So it's more sort of poor, par for the course, I would say. And as you can see, it goes down to the tail. And it really is, for the most part, it's actually painted pretty well throughout the tail, which for these uh, newer Bandai releases is a little bit of a surprise because a lot of them have been painted somewhat and then stopping at some random point. So I do appreciate that they at least seem to have painted it most of the way down, but it you know it certainly tapers off as you get to the smaller spines toward the end of the tail. But I think it looks good nonetheless here, though, folks. And uh, other than that, I think that just about covers it for the paint and the detail. I don't think I missed anything. Uh, next up, we'll take a look at articulation. So again, a Bandai Movie Monster series, you know, vinyl figure, so pretty basic. There's nothing in the head here, at, you know, at the neck or anything. Um, the arms, though, do swivel, and you see... I'm not, I'm not super crazy about when they put, like, the um, the swivel joints here as opposed to at the shoulder, but I guess just because of the sculpt, that's what they did. So you can swivel in and out like that, so it can go out pretty far if you're going to really stretch it all the way, um, you know, if you need to for some reason. But otherwise, just a nice swivel in and out like that. Obviously, because of the sculpt, you can't get it to go all the way around, but is what it is there. So it looks pretty good nonetheless. And then, of course, the legs where they join into the uh, waist area here. These can swivel as well. And if you move the arms out of the way, these, you got a little bit of force, but you can get them to go all the way around. Just want to try and not rub up against the body, though, too much. So you don't scratch any paint off or anything. But you get that full range swivel anyways. And then there's a glue seal on the tail, looks like. I don't, you know, as you guys may know, I don't like to break glue seal. So no articulation there. So, but, you know, basic, uh, basic POA, basic, you know, points of articulation here. So... Gets the job done for what it is, so not too bad there. Um, now, as far as sizing goes, got the ruler here. Of course, measure it in inches, and it is in the six-inch line. And as you guys can see, it stands right about that six-inch range, maybe just slightly over it. I'll bring the camera in just so you guys can see. Like I said, right about that six-inch range, maybe just slightly over that pretty nicely done size and just as a size comparison uh my good old faithful here the sh monster arts 1990 uh excuse me 1989 godzilla so my uh one of my personal favorite figures in my collection i know it's uh you know not everybody's cup of tea but i love this figure i mean the 89 like i said 89 91 godzilla is my are my favorite godzilla designs so and I think these guys look pretty good together. They're right about in line. This guy might actually be slightly taller than him. But other than that, I think they size in pretty well. Now, don't forget um, the 91 Godzilla in the film. You know, he was sort of uh, revamped by modernized nuclear weapons. And he actually was larger than, than he previously was in 1989. So, or 89 was supposed to be an 80 meter tall Godzilla the 91 throughout the rest of the Heisei era was 100 meters tall. But just as a basic size comparison, definitely think these guys look good together. And I think they would look really nice together on a shelf. So, go ahead and pull this guy away. And as far as pricing goes here, so that's the only thing. Now, I was looking up online, I guess because this is a couple years older and seems to be i don't know maybe getting a little bit more rare or something to find um you know this was essentially you know uh, roughly a 30 dollar figure when it came out and if you can try to track it down for that price or at least as close to that as possible i'd say jump on it if you're interested um but i've been seeing a lot of prices online ebay and, and things like that and it's been, you know, they've been selling them, selling these figures for like a hundred dollars or, you know, even up and 
personally, I would not pay that, especially for a you know Bandai vinyl figure, in my personal opinion. But if you guys can try to get a better deal than that and you're interested, then I would definitely jump on it. And other than that, though, I think that um, pretty much wraps it up for this video, though, folks. I would, you know, certainly like to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you would like to like in or comment on any of my videos, please feel free to do so as well. And just remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you be good to yourselves and sayonara.